afternoon to you, Honorable Dr. Ibrahim Mohamed Awal, and a very warm welcome to London. Thank you for making time to join us for this conversation and also congratulations on your appointment as a Minister for Tourism, Arts and Culture. Following the year of return and now the Beyond the Return initiative by the President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Adedankwa Ekufu Addo, Ghana has now become the place to be in Africa, especially in December. And December 2021 was another incredible celebration. Can you tell us about Ghana's agenda for tourism in 2022 and how this dovetails into the Beyond the Return agenda for the government? Thank you for the opportunity. Um, as you are aware, Mr. President, uh, the Beyond the Return in 2020. Unfortunately, the COVID set in and uh, things didn't go as planned. I mean, globally, tourism suffered. But in 2021, tourism in Ghana has started rebounding. Indeed, we achieved 74% over our set target for 2021. Wow. Globally, tourism grew by 3%. In Africa it grew by 12%, in Ghana tourism grew. We against target, we got about 74%. And this is because the president has been the lead advocate of tourism. His teacher, international teacher, makes people want to visit Ghana. I mean, he's the chairman of ECOWAS. His statements, international fora, even with the vaccines. When uh, Europe wanted to say that uh, any vaccine that was not produced in Europe would not be accepted, he challenged them. And that all this, his stature and utterances, attracts investors and, and tourists to Ghana. So our agenda for tourism in 2022 is to make Ghana the destination of choice for everybody around the world, especially the African diasporans. That's our agenda. As of now, Senegal and, and, and Gambia are ahead of Ghana in terms of tourists at arrivals. Ghana is number three. Okay. It's always been number three. Our target is to make Ghana number, number one, one tourism destination by close of 2022. Do you think the current tourist attractions are enough to keep the momentum of the Beyond the Return agenda going? Because I can imagine that after visiting Ghana for a number of times, our tourists would be keen to see newer um, and fresher things in the tourism space? Yeah, obviously the attractions are not enough. What government is doing, for that matter, the Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture, we're spending about $25 million this year to renovate and modernize our tourism attractions across Ghana. I can mention a few because okay. tourists keep coming and they need to see something new, something different. The most important in tourism is repeat visitation, not just coming and going. By repeating and encouraging friends, family, relatives to come. So we have 30 major projects in terms of innovation and expansion, modernization. Kwame Nkrumah Museum attracts about 100,000 visitors every year. We want to double that to about 200 plus. So we are embarking on the modernizing Kwame Nkrumah Museum. For now, it's just like a graveyard. We're adding a presidential museum, a restaurant, army block, and a playground. So that when visitors come, whether from within Ghana or outside Ghana, they see it as a proper tourism attraction. Uh, Cape Coast Castle, one of the most attractive, uh, attractive uh, tourist sites in Ghana, is being rehabilitated now to make it modern. We're going to have a museum in Cape Coast Castle, a modern museum. Yes, it's being worked on now. So that when visitors come, not only the door of return, but also to see the great cultural heritage. As I speak now, the National, the Gallup National Museum that has been closed for nearly eight years has been fixed because for lack of renovation, we renovated it. So that gallery now will be opened by His Excellency President Kufuado, February or March, depending on his time. Mm -hmm. And that will give a one-stop depiction of the cultural heritage and cultural assets of Ghana, Africa, and the world. So, and we have, instead of them, the Paga Crocodile Pond in Upper East Region is going to be done, Uburi Gardens, very mm -hmm. refurbished. Bray Gardens is going to be done. We have a lot, and we are going to have a lot of museums in the para Paramounts. We're going to have the Gbewa Palace, Yana's Palace is going to have a modern museum, or Chinese Palace have a modern museum. We find that Santa Hines Palace Museum is being done. We're going to have uh, the Cropon, and then the Ho Palaces. We're going to have modern museums. So that's one of the things we're doing 
not to attract tourists, but to get them coming and repeat, coming, repeat, coming, and to be ambassadors for us. That's so we are spending $25 million this year to modernize and renovate and add tourist attractions to make sure that Ghana has a constant stream, constant flow of traffic tourists across the country, across the world to Ghana. That's brilliant. And it's good to know about the rehabilitations that you're talking about. Um, $25 million, that's a lot of money. And you spoke about the Kwame Nkrumah Museum being like a graveyard right now and the fact that you're going to revamp it. I like what I hear. But there's one thing that we know in Ghana, there's, there's an issue of maintenance culture. So it's all well and good revamping all these beautiful sites. Are, we, are you going to be hot on it? Are you going to be on the case of those responsible for keeping it where at the levels that it should be at? Excellent. Good question. We have the Ghana Thousand Development Company now. It's been there, but a bit dormant. The Ghana Thousand Development Company is supposed to be the commercial wing of the ministry. Okay. So when we do that, we want to run tourism now as business. It's not business as usual. So I want to set targets for people to deliver. So GMMB, Ghana Museums Modern Boards, and the GTD, the Ghana Town Development Company, we're going to be giving them targets. Once we renovate a place, they make sure that they are accountable. Accountability is not just telling us how much money you get, who comes, how to renovate. They give us a plan of maintaining the attractions, make sure that they're up to speed and, and wet uh, attractions for foreigners and for visitors to look at. So it's not business as usual. Okay. You're going to be responsible, not just maintenance, also collecting money. Also innovating and keeping make sure that the attractions are very beautiful. Right. Is our tourism agenda seeking to draw in investments and FDIs into the country? Yes, for us, tourism is seen as a window of, for trade and investment. It's not as people coming and, and, and having leisure, eating, sleeping, and going. No. <laughs> when they come, we try to link them up to business opportunities. Together with the GIPC and Ministry of Trade, we try to organize them into seminars, get them to know that what is happening in Ghana. And FDI's um, last Ghana attracted more than any other country now in West Africa. We had 3.5 billion FDI's coming to Ghana, bigger than even Nigeria had. So we want to see tourism as a window of opportunity for trade and investment. So when, you, when we are in, good, the good thing for us is that Ghana is very stable. It's been rated as one peaceful country in West Africa. Yeah. So we want to leverage that and draw a lot of attraction in terms of trade and investment. There seems to be a heavy focus on the tourism side of things, but it will be good to know what developments you have happening in the creative arts space. Yeah, yeah um, creative arts, you cannot separate. To get a good tourism visitation, you need the creative arts space and the cultural space. That is why we're innovating and putting a lot of museums in the uh, chief town, in the, the, the paramounts of key. We have 20 paramounts in Ghana. I want to show that over the next three years, each paramount will have a good museum. They will set up the creative art agency, an agency under the ministry to take care of the creative arts. So for this instance, we're going to have a creative art fund that would support artists, give them some financial support. We're going to set up 10 amphitheaters wow. this year to provide opportunities and avenues for them. to. Well, what they lack is avenues to you know, market their activities. Yeah. So Accra, Kumasi, Tamale, Takwadi, it is all half amphitheaters. They'll be done before the end of this year. Okay. And that'll be the venue avenue for them to sell creativity, to make money, create jobs, and become popular. The GTA recently hosted a brilliant program called the Beyond the Return Conversation with the Diaspora, for which you were the keynote speaker. This was a brilliant initiative, and I was glad to hear the CEO for GTA, Mr. Akwesia Juman, mention that these conversations will continue. The diaspora has been widely described as a Sith region of Africa, and rightly so. Are there any other ways by which your ministry is planning on actively engaging with the diaspora? Excellent. Wherever we go around the world, we have to meet the diaspora and to let them know what opportunities await them in Ghana. That is why we're going to launch the Destination Ghana. And this Destination Ghana, the diaspora are key. So we have town hall meetings wherever we go. And we let them know very well about the opportunities, business opportunities that exist in Ghana. And you, you would not, most of them have come. Some are in the real estate business now. Some are in the transport business. Some are in the hospital business. So we want to open the plethora of opportunities for them to invest in. And we have been looking beyond just the diaspora, the second and third generation 
uh, Africans, particularly Ghanaians, to come. So the, the Beyond the Return conversations would continue. Indeed, it's part and parcel of the Beyond the Return and the uh, Destination Ghana agenda, where we think that the diaspora staff, they have skills, they have resources, want to come home and invest and get good returns for investment. So for the diaspora, key critical parts of our conversation and of our agenda. So to everyone listening, you heard it here first, Destination Ghana is on the horizon, so watch this space. There were a lot of diaspora youth in Ghana this December, and they've been doing very well by showcasing everything made in Ghana on all their social media platforms. There is a growing desire for the second and third generation to return to Ghana as well. Are there any efforts or plans in place to capitalize on their interest in the nation to boost tourism? Excellent. We know in Ghana, nearly 70% of the population of 32 million is made up of young people below 30 years. Nearly 70% of the young people in Ghana are below 30 years. So we're doing a series of things as government to get them. And most of them are very entrepreneurial. So in ICT, you know, and in real estate, ICT a lot, real estate, agribusiness, etc, etc. What we're doing is to, once you get the young people in Ghana satisfied and happy, help them in business. When their counterparts come from around the world, we pay them, we match make them into business. We should know we're also doing free education for SSS in Ghana to make sure that every child, irrespective of your financial status, can get access to secondary education free. So once that is a pool of talent for them, as we speak now, 1.6 million Ghanaians have access to free SSS. They won't have had for, the, for that policy of free SSS. So for us, the young people are very important. They are not only the future, they are the present. Indeed. They are not they are the present. So we encourage them to come. That's how we strive to have peace is the most important ingredient in attracting anybody to your country. Peaceful environment, attractive investment uh, incentives for young people, good quality education and healthcare. When we get it done, we're attracting our second and third generation to come in. Go to school if you want, invest if you want. You have to match make with your counterparts, your colleague, young people. ICT, agribusiness, housing. So we have incentive packages for them That's great. when they come. So which agency will be undertaking this matchmaking? GIPC is the lead agency, okay. Ghana Investment Promotion Centre, and where they have linkages with, for example, housing, you get the Ministry of Works and Housing, State Housing Corporation. Okay. If it's a GEPA, Ghana Sport Promotion Council is there, and we have uh, the GA, Ghana Enterprise Agency, they are all there, and then the Minister of Tourism Arts and Culture. So it's a, it's a, a cross-sectoral initiative, you know, that everybody reports to the presidency. And we think that if all the sectors put their heads together, as we're doing now in Ghana, the bottom line is that, encourage people to come, let them invest, let them go, go, go back with the returns of investment. To draw the curtain down on this very interesting conversation, what would be your message to the diaspora? Thank you. Um, to the diaspora in the whole world, Ghana, is the hometown of Africa. It is indeed. Ghana is the hometown of Africa. Please come, be an ambassador of Ghana. We are not really sure of a serene, peaceful environment. People are very warm. We have a president who is an action president. He walks his talk. Ghana is ready. Come, enjoy, happily, live well, invest in Ghana, and next time come with your family and friends so I can make Ghana the most valuable brand in Africa. Honorable Dr. Ibrahim Mohamed Awal, thank you ever so much for your time today and for shedding light on the plans of your ministry for tourism and creative art space in Ghana, the center of the earth, of course. We look forward to all the exciting things you have in the pipeline and to a brilliant collaboration between your ministry and the diaspora. Thank you very much. Excellent. Yes, I'm so grateful.